Hey pen friends, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to my cozy corner of the internet. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an updated setup slash flip through slash deep dive of my current traveler's notebook setups. So I'm going to be going over both of my traveler's notebooks that you see here, my passport, which I use as a planner and my regular, which I use as a journal. And I'm going to talk about everything I keep inside the notebook and do a bit of a overview video on all of the supplies that I use as part of my setup. So it should be a short one today, but we will, we will see. <laughs> and uh, I hope you enjoy seeing how I've set up my traveler's notebooks. So this is my passport traveler's notebook, which I use as a planner. The traveler's notebook cover that I have for this book is the camel color. So this is the camel passport traveler's notebook and I love brass charms. So I have brass charms on both my notebooks. This one here is a brass charm, which is part of the Starbucks collaboration with traveler's notebook. It is a Japan exclusive, but you can get it at third party resellers, which I will link below. But as a previous Starbucks employee myself, this charm means a lot to me. So I like having it on the front of my notebook. And if I open up the book, I have a couple things inside. The first thing I have is the zip case by Traveler's Company. This is a clear folder that has a couple pockets in the front. There's like one big one here and two smaller pockets here. And then at the back, there is, as the name suggests, a zipper, which you can open up and put things in it. I don't have anything right now, but sometimes when I travel with my planner, I will put IDs and other cards in here. And I do have a card slipped in the front here for decoration. This is from a previous limited edition release, but I'll see if I can find it and link it below. Part of why I have this clear zip case on the outside is because I want to protect my wallet, which is the next, the next thing in. Sometimes I find with traveler's notebooks, if you're not careful, the leather die on the inside of the cover can transfer to the wallet, which is something that I started to notice happening with this wallet here with the lighter stitching of the lettering on this logo. So to help prevent that from happening further, I put this clear zip case around the outside and it works really well. I haven't had any more transferring happen, which is really nice. And it also adds a nice piece of decoration, which is kind of fun. So functional and decorative uses for my zip folder. So as I mentioned, this is the wallet that I keep in my traveler's notebook. It's a collaboration with To and Fro, and it is the wallet in the olive color. It has a bunch of pockets here and another zipper compartment here. And I really like that this wallet is very lightweight. It's made out of like a rain jacket material. So it doesn't add a lot of bulk to the notebook, which is really nice. So both of my zip case and wallet are attached to my notebook through the string that goes through the cover. And in the middle of the string, I have my main planner book, which is a weekly free diary insert. So this is undated. Let me see. Here we go. Here's what it looks like normally. It is undated weekly pages. So you have to add the date yourself. I like that because I like to stamp the date and also uh, write in the dates myself. I think it's kind of fun. I also like the color of this cover. So that's like 50% of why I use this insert over the dated one. And this book is my calendar. So in here I will write any events or things happening. 
I write all of them in pencil so that it's really easy to go back and change them if anything inevitably changes, which I find happens a lot with different appointments and events. And I also will use stickers to mark my paydays as well as days when I'm in the office. So that is the main book that I keep on the band. And then I keep one more book in the back. This is my Field Notes grid notebook. So it just has this grid paper here. And this is what I use for my daily to-do list. I'm not gonna open it because every time I do, I have to censor so much and it's like so much work, but essentially it's just a running daily to-do list of all of the work that I have to do in my personal life as well as as a uh, product designer. So this is kind of my running daily to-do list and I just keep this tucked in the back of my notebook like this. And it doesn't really move around at all because the actual elastic closure prevents it from slipping out. So it's pretty secure, which is nice. Okay, so this is my regular traveler's notebook. It's also in the camel leather. This notebook, interestingly enough, is actually much, much older than this one. This notebook is about one year old and this one is about three years old. So if I take you closer, you might be able to see like some of the sheen and patina. If I take you over here, you might be able to see, this is where my dog sneezed on my notebook. That was, that was kind of stressful at first, but the beautiful thing about the Traveler's Notebook Leathers is they actually wear incredibly well. They can take a lot of abuse and a lot of the marks kind of absorb into the leather really, really nicely. You can kind of see the back is a little more patinaed from the front because that's where my hands are usually. I have pretty dry hands, so my covers don't patina super fast because I don't have a lot of hand oils, but I do really love how this one is aging. And this guy right here is my chonky, my chonky boy, he's, he's really thick. He's not like super thick, but compared to my passport, he's pretty, he's pretty chunk. Um, and this is my journal. So I think a couple videos ago, I mentioned I was gonna be journaling in a Stalogy. My plans were thwarted when I was unable to find the Stalogy notebook I wanted in stock in Canada. So. I did a little bit of a pivot and I decided to see if there was anything I could use that I already had in my stationary supplies that I could use for daily journaling. And around the same time, I had completed my travel journal for Spain. I made a separate video talking about that, which I can link above, but essentially I had created my Spain travel journal in one of the notebooks that you'll see in here. And I liked the setup so much, I just figured I would continue using that notebook for kind of daily journaling and life archives and all that kind of stuff. So that is why this notebook is my dedicated journal. And I'll just show you what I have in it. So I have another brass charm on the front here. This one is a Traveler's Company brass charm, and I believe you can get this at any of their partner stores. So I was able to get this one in Toronto at my Traveler's Company partner store, Wonder Pens, which is really cool. And I just have this on the front of the notebook. On the inside, I have a wallet. This is a wallet by Bomp Kuhin. It's called their Travel for Life Canvas Wallet. And this color is called Seashell, I believe. I think this colorway is limited edition. They'll like release different colors for a little bit and then once they sell out, they will release new colorways. Uh, but I do really like this one. So besides the wallet, I just have two notebooks in here. One is wrapped around the main band and the other one I usually I'll show you, it has like a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> I usually will take the notebook and what I do is I take the second part of the band and I will wrap the notebook around this part of 
the band like this so that it just sits in the notebook and it, it looks like that. I think it's okay to do this in your traveler's notebook. I've seen other people do it. I like to connect two notebooks this way because then I don't need to use a jump band, which I personally prefer, but you can also use a jump band and have the two notebooks fed underneath the main band that way. All right, so I'll start with the first notebook. Both of the notebooks I use are the grid notebooks by Traveler's Company, which I believe are insert number three. And they just have this white grid MD paper inside. The first notebook that I have is my daily journal. So this is where I write about every single day. I started this notebook when I went to Spain. So the first part of it is actually kind of a travel journal situation, but I do journal the same way for days when I'm not on vacation. So I have some like pockets here with ephemera and I just essentially write one paragraph per day and I write however much I want. I stick in ephemera and I usually secure it with a bit of washi tape. My favorite washi tape is by a Japanese brand called Yohaku, so I like to use these ones whenever I can. And yeah, I just have some pockets in here. These are the Traveler's Company pockets, number 004 in the regular size, but I'm sure you can find pockets by other people. They don't need to be Traveler's Company, of course. And then this is actually some journaling after the trip. So this is the rest of January in my journal and the start of February. And I am in the process of backfilling this right now. So I need to backfill February and March, but I'll just kind of continue that in this notebook until I finish it. Something I also do is I will underline kind of key details or big events with pencil so that they stand out a little bit on the page. So I did that in my travel journal and I really liked it. So I just continued it into my regular daily entries. The second book I have is kind of a rough, not like strictly following the format commonplace book slash maybe like overflow journal. Essentially, I use this to record quotes I like, additional information on things. This is like a entry on commonplacing. I will write about things, so like movie reviews, thoughts on stuff like that, Pokemon type charts, you know, critical information, as you can see. And I'll just kind of add, like if I have more to write about a journal entry, I will put it here. So this is a journal entry about a trip I took to the McMichael Art Gallery. So this is actually a copied piece of text of a entry on like the wall in the exhibit that I wanted to remember. So I just wrote that down here. I also put in some extra ephemera here. Previously, I would secure all my ephemera with a paper clip and I've upgraded to my adhesive pocket. So. I wanna actually go in and put a pocket here so that I don't need a paper clip. And then this is a good example. This is an entry about the Sagrada Familia, which was something I saw in Spain. So I have the entry in my daily journal about the Sagrada, but then I have kind of the additional information about the church and what I learned on the tour in here as kind of a supplement. I also will put notes in here on information that just I like to see. So I have a bunch of notes here on Kirby and the Forgotten Land copyability blueprint location. So I have these all written down in here. And that's kind of the format of this notebook. It's, it's really simple. A lot of my notebooks are just kind of writing, but I have been really enjoying this format where I just kind of focus on writing and letting the ephemera shine which I kind of like. So that is the regular journal. Part of me wonders if I should really split this into two traveler's notebooks, but I don't really want another excuse to buy another cover. 
Uh, but yeah, that is the regular Traveler's Notebook setup as a journal and my passport Traveler's Notebook setup as a planner. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how I've set up my Traveler's Notebooks. Maybe let me know below how you've set yours up. Uh, do you do anything differently? Do you use two Traveler's Notebooks together as well? And how do you use them? I would love to know. And besides that, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one.